It's the Big Rig Bull Texas Truck Accident Lawyer Rashard Alexander out here in Fort Bend County today. So let's get this vlog started off right. Ah, uh, the beverage of champions. So, I'm back in the view. You can hear me, see me. All right. So, welcome back, y'all. This is the Texas Truck Accident Lawyer, Richard Alexander, the Big Rig Bull. Today's topic uh, is going to be on the hours of service regulations. So, before we go any further with this vlog, I want to just make a correction to what I said yesterday. And I said, uh, I believe that the human body is 75% water. I believe it's actually 60%. The heart and brain are maybe 73%. And I think when you are newborn, your body is at 75%. Can you see these? Yeah, you can see them. Kale chips. What in the world? But they're not bad. You gotta stick to your gun. This is a leaf. My kids like that stuff. So, we're gonna keep it around the house. It tastes like grass. That tastes like shredded football field with salt on it. Healthy, but not really satisfying. So I don't have much to talk about today, but the one thing that I did want to focus on is that in Overdrive magazine, they're reporting that the House of Representatives is passing their annual Transportation Infrastructure Appropriations Bill, uh, well, THUD, Transportation Housing Urban Development uh, Committee, it is having their uh, annual Transportation Infrastructure Bill. And in that bill, they are going to bring back the public view of the CSA's safety measurement uh, systems. So you remember if you watched the past vlogs how I talked about the CSA program, how it's administered under the FMCSA and in that CSA program there are basically seven little categories that grade motor carriers, motor carriers and truckers. Um, those things you could not uh, observe or view if you were the public and you were not you know the motor carrier or the trucker um, now it looks like in 2020 they're finally gonna bring those back into the public view and this is a great thing for us number one because insurance companies can now have a more accurate uh, display of what has happened what has happened within that motor carrier company and what has happened on the roads with that truck driver and truck accident lawyers will know really how to truly gauge a case um, based off of the past violations of the motor carrier company or the truck driver. Now, you know, I know some guys are going to say, hey, well, the, C the SMS and the CSA doesn't always accurately reflect, you know, the efficiency um, and the safety, uh, safety history of us. But come on, I mean, why would they have the program there if it's not to grade you and to keep things in line? I mean, the purpose of 
regulations is to make sure that we don't have accidents. So if anything, this is a benefit to truck drivers and motor carriers in a way because it forces them to rise to the top and make them be on their P's and Q's when it comes to how they operate. You already know that if you don't do what you're supposed to do, that everyone's going to have access to the information in your history. So just my thoughts. Here we are, Texas Truck Accident Lawyer Rashard Alexander, the Big Rig Bull. Here we are, we're just talking about the hours of service regulations today. Um, so I don't know if you can see this board, I brought in a lot more light today. Hopefully this makes it a bit more illuminated um, if you're following along with me. But the first thing we want to talk about is the maximum hours of service that a truck driver can operate safely on our roads here in the United States of America. Um, we have a property and a passenger rule when it applies to truck drivers and commercial motor vehicles. And basically what that is is that if you are a truck driver, you cannot drive more than 11 hours after 10 consecutive hours off duty. Okay, did you, did you get that? That's, if, that's the property rule. If you're transporting property, then you can only drive 11 hours after 10 consecutive off duty hours. Okay, now you cannot operate a commercial vehicle after 14 hours of, ten, uh, of being off 10 consecutive hours off duty. So I hope I didn't mangle that when I just said that, but I'll, I'll try it again. So you cannot operate a commercial vehicle after 14 hours uh, if you've been consecutively off duty for 10 hours. Okay, so you can drive for 11 hours basically. You can even drive a little bit longer than that in some situations, but I'm going to get to that later. But you can't operate a commercial motor vehicle after being on duty for 14 hours. Because the reality of it is, is that if you're a truck driver, you're not always going to just be on the road driving. That is not the entire uh, job description for someone who is a commercial motor vehicle uh, uh, driver, you know, when I used to work at the uh, home improvement store, the guys would come and they would help you. Well, not necessarily help you unload it because I used to forklift or whatnot, but you know, they would untie the stuff, get their tie downs down, and everything like that. And that stuff takes time. When they're getting re repairs and stuff done, they're waiting for someone to come repair the truck. Uh, that stuff takes time. So that 14-hour rule is, you know, it's a pretty hard rule to uh, to, to to break because we all know that it's it's an established thing. Um, as far as the passenger rule, so a driver that's carrying passengers, they cannot drive more than 10 hours following eight consecutive hours off duty, okay? Or operate a commercial vehicle after on duty for 15 hours following eight consecutive hours off duty. So I hope you got all that, but I'm going to repeat it again just so, you, so, just so you make sure you got it. So a driver cannot drive more than 10 hours following eight consecutive hours off duty or operate a commercial vehicle after being on duty for 15 hours following eight consecutive hours off duty. So they got to get eight hours off, you know, to rest up and everything if they're going to be on duty for 15 hours, okay? And if they're going to drive, pretty much it's the same thing. You got to get eight hours off if you're, tr if you're carrying passengers, okay? A driver cannot operate a commercial motor vehicle after being on duty for more than 60 hours, I'm sorry, for 60 hours in any seven consecutive days if the motor carrier does not operate every day of the week. Did you catch that? A driver cannot operate a commercial motor vehicle after being on duty for 60 hours in any seven consecutive days unless that motor carrier operates every single day of the week, okay? A driver cannot operate a commercial motor vehicle if they're on duty for 70 hours and any consecutive eight days if the motor carrier does not operate every day of the week, okay? I'm trying to go slow here so you can catch all this if you need to. I think most people that would see something like this um, for the most part already know these rules, but for you know the the client who may be wondering you know what 
types of things you're looking at as a truck accident lawyer when you're assessing my case. This is one of the main things because hours of service regulations will drive us directly back to driver fatigue. And it will also drive us back to uh, you know, negligent entrustment, uh, retention, hiring claims, and all that. But it also t take us back to if there was some type of service issue or vehicle maintenance issue that was that was supposed to be taken care of during those hours of service, how was that time spent? I think my battery is about to die, so I may have to put another battery in here and then continue on from there. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Give me one second. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I am back. And I think we just covered uh, the maximum hours of service rules, the property uh, rule, the passenger rule, and whatnot. I think we're on the actual definition of what is on-duty time. And uh, there are basically nine things that I've enumerated here uh, about what qualifies as on-duty time for a truck driver operating a commercial motor vehicle. Okay, The number one thing is that any time that you spend at a plant, a terminal, or facility, even if you're waiting for a dispatch, if you're waiting and, you, at, at red, and you're at ready, then that is considered on-duty time. So like I said before, that's the thing about truck driving. That's why it really deserves a lot more respect as a profession because it's not just getting behind the wheel of that truck and driving. It's a lot more involved in it than that. Um, and it's it's a pretty hard it's a pretty hard uh, job. It's like actually listed as I think the fourth most most stressful job in America. Um, the last time I read some type of uh, survey, probably about two, probably about two weeks ago. Um, but number two for what qualifies as on on duty time, uh, any servicing or and or inspecting of the vehicle is considered on duty time. Uh, if you're there while it's being serviced, that's on duty time. Um, Number three, time spent obviously operating the commercial motor vehicle. So any time spent behind the wheel is obviously uh, on-duty time. Number four is all the time that you spend in the commercial motor vehicle, including in the sleeper berth. So even if, you know, like I said before, if you're in the commercial motor vehicle while it's, you know, for any reason, for the most part, you're going to be considered on-duty. Number five all the time spent loading or unloading that commercial motor vehicle. So I, I can give you an example, you know, just a really, really brief one. I remember when I ran the lumber department at night and the, uh, the truck would show up and the guy was, you know, at one point I didn't run the lumber section, someone else did. And the guy used to really complain about him because he was slow getting the, uh, the dressed lumber off of the truck. And, uh, you know, he just didn't help the guy out. And every time when I would come out there, I would, you know, bus ass pretty much to help him do what he has to do to to get back on the road because I understand you know we all we all have jobs we all have things to do and uh, like I said all that time load, loading and unloading is considered on duty time and that's the biggest thing for a truck driver the sixth thing is repairing uh, repairing or remain to obtain assistance of a disabled vehicle so if your vehicle or your truck is disabled and you're still there waiting for someone to come fix it, you're still considered on duty at that time. Number seven is the all the time spent providing a urine or a breath sample. So if you have, for whatever reason, if you, if you have to give a urine or a breath sample for alcohol and drug testing or something of that nature, that's going to be considered on duty time. Number eight is any time performing any work on behalf of the motor carrier. So if you're doing anything on behalf of the motor carrier, you're going to be considered on, on duty as well. Number nine is all time performing compensated work for any entity. So this doesn't necessarily have to be a motor carrier, but any time, any compensated time or any compensated work, excuse me, that you're performing for any entity, because we all know that the motor carrier may not be always the one that you're necessarily working for. These uh, companies are merging and they're doing really funky things in the background. You know, you got shippers and brokers and all these other uh, players and whatnot. And you may be getting paid by someone who is, you know, shipping the freight and also the motor carrier in this day and age. So all that time performing compensated work for any of them would be on duty time. The exceptions are that a driver cannot complete a run within the maximum driving time. So if you can't 
make it to your destination in that 11 hour, hour of service driving period, you have additionally two hours to complete that run or to reach a, a place of safety. Now you need to understand that these exceptions don't apply to everyone and they don't apply to everything. And the hours of service rules don't also apply to some people as well. So if you get a truck accident case, uh, you know, like I say, this is a general basic overview to try to say that this is a mastery of the hours of service or any type of truck accident law would be a fallacy. So I'm just giving you a, a one, ex one exception because there are, there are a few. Um, the other one is uh, maximum hours of service does not apply to all drivers depending on his or her job title or description. And that's why I said what I just said because some drivers are not just drivers. They, are, they have other occupations or other subtitles and if that is the case that these rules may not necessarily apply to them um, depending on where they drive, how they drive, and their, and their job title. Um, for example, local, local deliveries during certain seasons uh, can be exempt from HOS. Uh, the radius rule, the 100 mile uh, radius rule during certain, certain planting and harvesting uh, seasons also uh, is an exception to this. I know in California recently um, they were granted a, a, 60, uh, a 60 truck fleet was granted I believe a 160 mile radius exception um, yesterday it was reported in Overdrive magazine I believe. So that's, that just goes to show you an exception right there. Um, one of the last things I wanted to say is that the drivers must keep accurate logs. That is a huge thing. Um, they must record, the driver must record their duty status for each 24 hour period on the ELD in his or her uh, tractor trailer. Uh, the ELD is the electronic logging device. So if, if, you're a if you're a truck driver, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not a truck driver, don't worry about it. But um, like I said, you have to record, you have to keep that accurate and you have to record that in the ELD. Um, failure to maintain accurate logs or driving in the excess of the on-duty hours of service time can result in violations which would ultimately result in an out-of-service status. So you don't want to be in that situation because then you're useless to yourself and the company and you can't make money. So always, you know, stay within the hours and like I said before, if this is a situation where I'm dealing with a truck accident case, these are the things that I'm going to be looking at or examining, at least one of them, I'm going to be examining to see if the truck driver did exactly what they were supposed to do on their job. So that concludes this vlog and the hours of service regulations for today. I will see you guys later and have a nice day.